guys and welcome back to another M Crater tutorial. So today I I actually read the comments last um a couple days ago and somebody suggested a tutorial on basically things that you can pick up and uh store basically entities similar to pokeballs and stuff like that. Um I actually did make that a long time ago for a workaround for one of my mods and I never ended up publishing it so I thought I would basically go back recreate it and um, basically do a tutorial on it since I'm not going to be using it for one of my own mods so that's where uh, this basically comes in it's an uh, empty pod and there is also a filled pod if we go into our miscellaneous things there's also a filled one this one doesn't actually have any actual action right now because it's just a generic item it's the empty paw that we want uh for our thing now a lot of the entities will have to be programmed in by hand so if you want to say tame a pig i haven't set up a pig but you can make it with vanilla items as well as uh cross mod i'll explain more in a little bit I have, for demonstration purposes, though, have set up a quick demonstration for wolves. So I can kind of show you how things work. So first off, we have a just a standard wolf. Uh, he's all normal and stuff like that. We can pick him up. And you can see that there is 13, ta or 13 um, tags for MBT now. If we scroll all the way down, as you can see, this one doesn't have any MBT tags. Uh, you can do F3, I believe, D for showing the X, the, um, nope, D does that. I don't know which one. G maybe? Nope, that's borders. H, pardon me. So if you want to show X, F, advanced tooltips and you go F3, H, and then you will be able to see if there's any MBT tags um, attached to it. So when there is MBT tags, that means that there is data attached to that particular item or um, block or whatever. So uh, when we place it down, as you can see, um, the only difference is now that name is basically the name of the wolf of the display name that was placed down it on it. This doesn't really make any d difference if it was tamed or not. As you can see, it's still a wild wolf. It's just he has a name tag now of wolf. So we can pick him up again. And we can go ahead and just place him down over... We'll actually place him down over here. And then what we'll do is we'll grab him. And then we'll leash him up. And then we can basically copy him. And then what we can do is we'll just place that down... Whoop. Okay, let's try that again. I need that block cleared. Try putting you on here. And then we will go ahead, remove that. Place that down here. As you can see, he's our lead led up again to the fence post. That's because these blocks here, 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 and where he's standing, if we basically have the leashed uh, data already when we capture him, then you'll be able to actually put him on a fence post if they're on one of these blocks when you right click. So it's really good for basically leashing up other entities and stuff like that, like cats and stuff. If you don't want to necessarily go ahead and, um, you know, have to le leash them all up after uh, you pick them up and stuff like that. You can just quickly grab them, place them down, and there you go. They're all set up ready to go so another thing is the lead actually gets picked up I guess with the entity so it's actually probably recommended that you place it down next to um, the uh, fence post so you guys can get it all set up now if we place this one down next to it as you can see he's not led up by that other things that uh, basically get carried over is health so let's go ahead um, tame this one up actually and he's on our side now and we'll just tame this one up quickly now as you can see his tail is pretty accurate where it should be um if we go ahead and damage him a little bit then we can kind of demonstrate that he does get hurt i'm not sure the best way to do that i think an arrow will actually kill him so we'll just kind of So as you can see, his uh, tail's a little bit down a little bit now, and that indicates that he's injured. So we can actually pick him up, and we'll go ahead and we'll just um, go back over here so we can keep him with us. And his tail 
oddly enough is up again but it's not the case for what um the health is so if we pick them up again and we put it in the chest we can actually check the health uh normally you won't be able to do this in survival but um this is due to a command being run on for creative so if we go ahead and go data get and then we'll get the entity uh or pardon me block and then we want to get the coordinates of the chest uh if we go ahead and look at the data that is in here so air is basically taking care of maximum health and oh i guess health did get reset that's interesting i'm not sure why it got reset that's it shouldn't have that might be a bug um yeah so the name as well as the rotation if it's tamed uh the motion and um few other things uh, like air and stuff like that is all taken in consideration mob basically is the variable that is for uh determining it, what kind of mob it is now vanilla ones only need the name of the entity uh, oddly enough so if i wanted a creeper then i would just basically fill mob out with a uh, creeper and you don't need the necessarily namespace for the minecraft one for that but if you're using something like from your own mod or from another mod, then you will want to um, put your the namespace of that mod in front and then the entity name. So that's basically how that's all set up. And the rest of it is pretty much just generic. Uh, there's no gravity. I could actually add support for that uh, more recently. So before I didn't have support for that because it wasn't existent. But uh, the owner is also dev. So basically when you pick up a... A wolf that's tamed well if you try to it will test if the owner is the owner of the wolf itself because when you actually place it down it's automatically taste taming it to the nearest um entity so for example um we're basically going to team the wolf as soon as we place it down by the player that places the entity down so it's important to basically try to make sure that the system is uh, secure, so that's why I have that extra precaution in for the um, keeping track of the owner and stuff like that. So hopefully that will work. I'm not, I haven't tested it. I don't have a server to test it on at the moment, but um, and I I don't generally have the time to either. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's basically the mechanics of it. And again, if we pick up the the mob, it should keep its data. See, this one's wolf. If we name it something like maximum then we can pick this up and it should keep its name i'm not sure why the health uh didn't stay the same that was interesting but i'll look into that see what i can find out i might do a patch for the script but as you can see he's still tamed and everything like that i don't think the colors actually stay the same though uh we can try that quickly uh, we'll go and grab some blue dye I don't think there's a way to do that. Even if there was, I don't think there would be. Yeah, there isn't a way to keep the collar color. But uh, there isn't a way to test for it either in M Crater. So I need a little bit of support added for M Crater first before I can do some more advanced stuff. But um, yeah, for the most part, I mean, it, it works pretty efficiently and stuff like that. And like I said, uh, if you wanted to add extra support to other entities like pigs and stuff like that, you would have to add that entity support for both picking up the item and placing down the item. But uh, it's not really too hard to actually set up. Uh, the script will already be pretty much pre-configured for you guys. Uh, I will provide an alternate version so you guys can copy and paste because the one of the procedures the placing is a little bit long due to the um lead, lead um to the fence mechanics so yeah it's i'll probably break it up into several parts so it's easier for people to get the lead system all set up but yeah um outside of that let's go into amp crater and we'll just take a look at the code quickly all right, so for this particular workspace, uh, you will need uh, two items, two procedures, depending on how many items you or entities you want to add support for. 
there will be uh, two procedures for each one of those. And then you want your um, two item tags for keeping track of the item that you're basically going to use the pod for. So one's for empty item, one's for filled item. Those are the tags for these two. And then you'll need a tag for your entity that you're basically cloning as well. All this is under your mod namespace. So keep that in mind when you set it up. For your items, it's just basically generic items. And a lot of these properties are just the default properties. Nothing has literally changed. Um, one suggestion I do suggest is making the max stack size set to one for both your empty and filled pods. I uh, think the filled ones are more important to set to one than your empty ones, but uh, you could actually use 64 to have a larger capacity in the inventory so you can carry them around. But the only downside with the script is it will replace all that entire stack, so it's probably best that you just keep this to a stack size of one. Um, procedures the entity tags as you can see it's uh, pod slash empty this is the way that I set it up um, it's uh, under the namespace of the mod itself which is called capture pods the the namespace is right up here if you look at the uh, workspace title bar now if it's different if you've renamed the workspace then you want to go to uh, your workspace and then workspace settings and then your name space for your mod will be right here so you'll need that namespace for this one if you're putting it under your mod namespace if it's under another mod uh, namespace then you want to put their mod namespace there and um, if it's under the minecraft namespace and you can put it there or a forge but i suggest putting it under your own mod <clears throat> because it's um important to keep things separate so it doesn't have mod conflicts and stuff like that so make sure that it's under at least something separate that isn't being used for other people uh the other thing is it needs to be item and they're just selecting the item that it will be for this case it's an empty one so we're selecting the empty item you'll need to set up the items first for that and then the filled one same idea it's just pod slash filled and then it's under the same mods namespace and the wolf is a entity um, tag type. We're just basically specifying what type of entity that we want to uh, select. And then we're giving it a registry name. I've just put it under the wolf thing. Now, if you want to make a category for it, that would probably be smarter than just adding wolf as the tag. So you could do something like uh, capture pods um, or capture or pod slash wolf. And then we could it would be separate in its own uh, folder directory so it doesn't overlap with other tags and stuff like that. So that's probably what you want to do with that. Another good idea when you're setting up the tags is to go and name something like um, the item tag at the end of it. So it's easier to search for uh, in the search results and stuff like that. So you can basically just search item tag and all the item tags will come up regardless if it's an entity one or whatever. Uh, you could probably use the filter function as well, but um, I like to do that because sometimes when you make tags, they sometimes overlap with the same name and it's uh, just good for separating them by like item uh, tag and then there's block tag and then they could use the same tag uh, name and that will be fine but um, yeah it's just important to kind of keep the thing separate I just made it quickly so it was easy to demonstrate all right so with those two things or those other things out of the way now we can go into the procedures uh, the main procedure is the player right clicks on wolf. So this is basically being run from a global procedure. This makes it uh, compatible with um, any entity pretty much. Uh, all you need to do is basically test for the namespace and tag for the mod or the entity. And you need to make sure that the item for your empty pod is detected right at the top here. Again, you want to do your namespace and then your colon, and then your basically your path for your tag as well. And same thing for the wolf. It's just we're testing for the wolf directory and everything like that. So after that, what we're doing is we're going to test uh, if the entity is tamed. Now this is important to make sure that we can actually pick up the entity. If it's not, 
team if it's teamed and it's not the same owner um, as the person that is right clicking on it we're just going to abort that action and then we're not going to run this script down here which is basically the main script for making sure that the entity gets picked up so again uh, we're getting the owner of the tamed entity and we're testing if it's the source entity which is the source entity is the player entity right clicking on the uh, event slash target entity which is obviously in this case the wolf so I've added notes to all these different things so it's easier for people to figure out how things work um, a lot of these MBT things are just storing variables so we can actually keep it for a later date and then we can right click on the field one so after that uh, the other thing that it's doing is if it's not tamed, then what we're doing is we're going to test if it's not, it's just going to return uh, true using an else statement. Because if it is tamed, then obviously the only other outcome for that is if it's not tamed. So we're just using this and we're returning true because we want to make sure that we can pick up non-tamed um, entities as well. And it doesn't really matter if it's owned by anyone at that point, so we can just return true. All right, so after this variable is true, uh, then we are basically testing if the variable is true just by putting the variable onto the if statement like that. This block right here basically tests for the source entity. Now remember the source entity is the player that is using the item. And we're going to test if the main item, well, we already tested for the main item in the main hand to be an empty pod. So we're basically just replacing that with our filled pod and then what we're doing is we're going to, after we have the fill pod in our inventory, we can start applying all the different variables to the entity and then finally despawn that entity. So again, um, event slash target, anytime you see that, that's basically just making sure that the entity is, that we're right clicking on. Any source entity is the thing that we're actually right clicking from. So source entity is the player in this case. So we're testing for the item, replacing it, then we're applying the namespace for the mob. This is important to keep lowercase. Uh, if you're using um, a, a mod namespace, say that you have your own wolf, then you would want to go with your namespace, colon, and then the name of the entity. So the entity registry for that case. So if it's like wolf, um zombie then it would be wolf underscore zombie in that case so just make sure to keep that in mind when you're using a other mods entity or your own mod entity and um, you'll have to make sure that this is set up like that uh for vanilla ones though uh wolf works just perfectly fine you don't need the namespace for that um Again, the name is just basically the name of the entity. We're just basically storing it for later use. And then we're testing if the entity is tamed. So if it is tamed, then what we can do is we can store the display name of the source entity, which is basically the player name. So we can basically make sure that we carry it over to the... Um, I'll explain how that basically works in a little bit, but we're basically going to test if the source entity is the same as the um, actual owner and stuff like that. Below is basically testing if the entity is leashed. So we basically just uh, put the condition is leashed and it will return true or false. So that's what these ones are doing here. It's uh, getting if it has no gravity, if it's tamed, and if uh, the leash. So all these are just regular blocks that you can find under the uh, entity data tab they're all under here some of them aren't able to be used because either m creator doesn't have a way to actually set the things up for the function or some of them in mc stacker didn't support it so things like sneaking and stuff aren't possible because it, it, even though that is possible in M creator, it's not possible to set in MC stacker. So unfortunately I couldn't use those. Um, a lot of the things in there aren't possible either and vice versa for MC stacker to M creator. It's just, these are the ones that I was able to actually set up. So maximum health. So we're basically getting the maximum health of the entity 
And then what we're doing is we're also getting the health of the entity as well. And we're just applying it to that. Now, I'm not sure why this did not get the health of the wolf when we actually had it damaged. Uh, everything seems to work properly, so I'm not sure if there's something I'm missing in that per particular regard. But it should be getting it properly, I'm not sure. Alright, so the other thing that we're doing is we're basically getting um, air, so how much oxygen the entity has. Now all these are basically uh, number variables, so we're basically keeping it to a number variable that we're basically assigning it to. Health, air, maximum health, um, motion, so basically the velocity of that particular entity we're also keeping, so we have support for that. You'll need X, Y, and Z because that's what we'll have to store it as for a thing to carry it over and the rotation so the yaw and pitch that we could basically assign the entity now one thing that i have noted uh noticed is that uh the yaw and pitch is actually relative to if the the direction of the entity that is walking if it turns to the player it does not count of it actually being facing the player for some reason i'm not sure why that is but um, it, it's a weird phenomenon, but if it faces the player or another entity, it will still count at the direction that it was facing before it started to turn. It's a weird phenomenon. I'm not sure why, though. And then lastly, we're just despawning the event slash target entity, aka the wolf, and then we're basically picking it up that way. So that's this procedure here. It's a little bit of a lengthy one, but it's not too big compared to the other one. Uh, one thing that you will need is a local variable called can capture, and it's a logic one. And then we're just using it for this part right up in here. So that's all that's going on there. All right, the other one is a little bit longer. This is why I'm going to break it up into parts, um, just so it's a little bit easier for you guys to set it up. Now I'm going to number the procedures because these ones are actually a lot longer than they look like. If we expand the text field, then you can see that all the data is actually getting put in that we basically stored into these um, long summon commands for storing things. I'll break down each individual part in just a second, but um, there are a couple parts. These first parts right up here with the conditions those are testing if the entity was uh, has a lead so if it has a lead then what we're doing is we're going to basically um, test if there is a minecraft block with the tag fences this will test if there is a wooden fence or a wooden type of fence next to the entity on um, the equivalent to a positive direction or negative direction on x and z and up one block so you might want to add support for other directions i'll explain how to configure that in just a moment but uh the only other thing that we're doing is we're testing if the entity is leashed uh through getting the the actual value through our item mbt so again we're this is a little bit different how it's set up because the event slash target entity is now the player and the there is no source entity support so we actually had to run a little bit of additional script down um, here to test for the entity so again we're testing for the wolf if it exists and then we're going to use the nearest entity and we're just going to basically tame it up that way but that's kind of a step ahead we actually need to summon the entity in first so that's where all these blocks come in for the execute command uh, they're pretty much the same for the most part uh, a couple different changes is the direction so the direction where it says leashed this is basically where the leash is going to be attached to uh, it's important to make sure that it's the same location as the fence that we're detecting so that's where that part comes in that's the only difference for the top four so these ones right here and we're just changing the coordinates of those directions and then the last one doesn't actually have the leashed data so if we scroll in there isn't any leashed data in here for the um, thing to actually be set so that's the only difference in that particular order um, 
I'll make sure to copy all this and um, make sure to make it a separate procedure file so you guys because most like this will be too big for running on one computer so what you can do instead is you can basically just uh, attach this to a sub procedure and then just call it using the uh, call block Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see so it's this call block procedure right here so it'll be able to just call in the procedure instead and then it should be a lot less heavy on your uh, rendering for the thing um, I would set it up that way if it's a lower grade computer not like a gaming computer or anything like that but um, I'll make sure to provide the full version and the split up one with all the different types of blocks I'll just name them the, like one two three four and then five based on the order that they're in in the list so you guys can easily set them up all right so with that being said now let's take a look at how the command is actually set up so we're summoning we're getting the mob so the mob again was the mob that we specified here so again that should be a namespace for the mob and then what we're doing is we're going to give it a coordinate where we're spawning uh, we're going to put it one block above so it doesn't get stuck in the ground so that's important and then we're basically applying all this MBT data after that. So that's all that stuff down here. And the first thing that you might notice is custom name. So this is basically the control for the custom name. Now, um, I have added a lot of information over for all the data and stuff like that. So color, all these are the different colors you can basically use for the color codes. Uh, you can also use hex, which is basically the hue and other settings it's like a certain code that you can use you can actually go into paint.net and it will provide you a hex code when you select a color on the color wheel uh, the hex is right here so if you want to use a custom color then you can basically use this just make sure that it has the pound sign in front of it so you can basically uh, set it up so I've given an example here this is uh, equivalent to red so you can see that it has a pound sign right in front of it and then it has ff which is white and then 000 is black so basically it's basically saying give it full red for that particular one all right default color is white um if you want to in add formatting then you can do that as well uh, there's bold italicize underline strike through and uh, focused which is the random characters and stuff like that um, all those are described of how you want to set it up. Now, if you don't want those particular fe features, then you could just set it to false. If you want to enable it, you can set it to true uh, without the quotations, of course. Error, so we're just basically getting the error. We're assigning it to the value of error for the entity. No gravity, we're doing the same. Is leashed, we're doing the same. Uh, leashed location then we're doing that uh, persistent so this is one that you'll have to set up with the procedure itself um, for example if the you want the mob to not despawn persistence required you will want to set this to one if you don't want them to uh, despawn if you want them to have the chance of despawning then you want to set this to zero so by default the procedures are set up for one for not despawning Health, this is basically going to be the value for the actual health of the entity. Again, I'm not sure why it was formatting it so it was um, like a regular number. I'm not sure why it was doing that. It should have been keeping the data for some reason, but I'm not sure exactly what was causing it to not... Um, like setting it back to the maximum health it was interesting I'm, I'll have to look at this particular setup attributes is basically where we're getting the maximum health from um, you can actually adjust the maximum health if you wanted to by increasing the value of the maximum health that it was before and then just adding to it so you could actually get a pretty buffed out entity if you wanted to add like an additional 10 or something like that um, obviously that would be really overpowered every time you picked it up but um, or every time that you 
placed it down, but that that is an option if you wanted to add extra health points to it. Um, after that, we're basically getting the motion of the entity. So motion X is, this is just basically the motion variable, and then we're applying it there. A lot of these brackets and commas, uh, make sure you don't edit those because those are things that shouldn't be touched. Um, a lot of this is not configurable. Uh, because if you start editing the code and stuff like that, it will start breaking the system. It's very specific on how it needs to be formatted. Um, things like the one, pretty much anything with comments uh, listing what it is are just for information. But some of them, like the coordinates and stuff, you might not want to mess around with too much. But uh, yeah, outside of that, I am explaining which ones are which. Uh, rotation, this is for the entity itself, so we're basically getting the yaw and pitch, and then lastly, the last bracket is just making sure that we close out the MBT. So that's basically all that it's doing, is just summoning an entity with the same properties that we had before. Um, I'm collapsing these so it takes up less space for the first load. Um, once it's finished spawning though, what it's doing is it's basically um, testing if the entity is teamed through the item and then we're going to test for the item that we basically just spawned so in this case it was a wolf and then what we're doing is we're getting the nearest entity that uh, within that radius and we're going to tame it up by the sort or event slash target entity which is the player and then finally we're just sending the main hand item back to a um, empty pod so we can recapture it if we want to. So that's basically all that there is to it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff. The right click on entity is the one for picking up the item or entity. The one when we right click on a block right up here is basically when we want to place down the entity. So hopefully you guys found this tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I'll make sure to leave the individual parts as well as the main procedure in um, separate workspace on GitHub. So you guys can download that and use them however you want. But outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.